Hi everyone, it's Gail and I am here going to work on my Blue Fern Studios project. We're going to make we're going to make some more pages. Today, I'm not positive what we're doing, but I'm just going to wing it. So, we will get started with hi and hugs to Susie, Gigi, Joanne's Collective Company, and Monica. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your nice comments. Okay, well, I have a couple things in mind. Oh, I forgot to grab something. I wonder if I have something that will work. We might, we might look. Okay, so we have this page. Oh, I was going to tell you since last time, I did decide I was going to leave this play, page blank, but I had this little scrap and I loved the the two people doing their ice skating. So I stamped it with this book belongs to and did a decorative corner, put it on a piece of lace. And that is, this is going to be the first page of the book. Then we did those yet, uh, last time and that, and then this. So let's get on to making some more. Um, what I may do is I may do some um, some like coffee dyed paper and things like that. I may do that off camera, but then I will definitely tell you what I've done. So, um, okay, I you know I'll walk you through it on the next on the next episode because otherwise we're going to be till next Christmas getting this done. I think. Okay, so I know I I know the one what I want to do. This one would be good for it. Have I used I haven't used this one yet. Let's use this one for the one. Okay. Um I've had questions about how big my template is. It's nine and a half tall, six and a quarter inches this way. All I did was I took a original page from the binder and then and then I just made this the exact same size as an original page. So that's the scoop on that. All right, well, let's get to crafting here. I just got back from going out to lunch with my friend. Oh, and I have something exciting. At least it's exciting to me to share with you about that. So, um, this was lunch with my friend that is moving back here after 20 years away. We, we determined that we had worked together at the college for 10 years and, um, I'm going to make this nine and a half this way, uh, nine and a half, because that's how tall, that's how tall we go for this particular journal, nine and a half. Okay. Um, so anyway, worked together 10 years. She's been gone from Helena for, um, about, let's see. She's been gone for 20 years, almost, not quite 20 years. Okay. This is going to be my, is that going to be my front page? How are we going to do this? This is going to be my front page. So I am going to score this at six and a quarter. Like so. And then this is going to bend back like we did on another one. Okay. So I wanted to do another one like that. Now I'm going to, I'm going to continue just making some pages here. Um, I want one to flip. This one actually might be pretty good for that. Um, not that one so much. That's a little low. This one would be good too. This one would be, oh, that's it. That's that one. Okay. Okay. I am getting down to the nubbins of my first kit. Like this is all that's left of big. So I have six pages left. Whew. 
Okay, well, let's do this one this way. Okay, so anyway, um, and I think I told you, well, I know I told you, that she is moving in just across the street from me, one house over. And right now they're renting while they do some renovations to the house in my neighborhood. So I think I told you also that they are renting a house that is um, was was a local artist. He and his wife's house. And um, let's see, six, I want to cut this six and a half. Ah, uh, six and a quarter. Six and a quarter. Uh, so anyway, they're renting this house. And it was, it, it's in the mansion district, but it's not one of the mansions. It's more like a house from the 1950s. And, oh my gosh, it's so, it's so cute. Okay, we're nine and a half tall, right? So what I'm going to do on this one is I'm just going to score that. And we're going to make that just a pocket. That's what is a what to wear going to do. Um, so she, I went to pick her up for lunch. And she showed me the house, which it's just, it really is. It's adorable. It's like right out of Leave it to Beaver. It's like, it's like a 50s house for sure. And not a lot has been done to upgrade it or update it, but it's in like perfect condition, perfect condition. Um, so that, that was really kind of fun to see. And then, um she was taking me on the tour. We went downstairs and, um, this one, and we got to this one room downstairs and I was like, oh my gosh, if this were my house, I would want this for my craft room. And it was a, you know, fairly decent sized room, had a couple of real nice windows, big windows. Um, it actually had a fireplace. So, um, I was thinking, oh, maybe it was their uh, family room. No, I don't think so because we are walking through and I said I'd want it as my craft room and my friend Sandra said, let me show you something. So we go deeper into the room and it's got dark wood flooring and in this one spot close to this window, it, there's paint splotches all over the floor. Oh, that's where he painted. Oh my gosh, I got goosebumps. It was so cool. I don't know if, if everyone would appreciate that, but I think you guys would. Okay, I'll show you what we're going to do with this one. I'll quit, I'll quit blabbing for the moment. Let's see. I need to cut this off at nine and a half though, don't I? Okay, I'm going to focus here on my crafting for a minute. But <laughs> yeah, it was cool. I was like, oh my gosh, that's where he painted really really cool okay so this one I'm gonna take and it's gonna be like a half inch short or something but we are going to score it right in half because it's 12 in inch paper right we're gonna score it at six boom and then we're going to just fold that like that and this is going to be a little pocket, uh, you know, a big pocket, not a little pocket, a big pocket. And I think I'm just going to do a thumb hole on this one side is all like here. Okay. Okay, I'd say that might be enough to play with today for now. We'll see what else we get what else we get up to. Okay, I want to get this distressed a bit. And I'm thinking of using green on it. This is Lucky Clover Distressed Oxide.
So yeah, I felt, I felt like I was in a, almost like in a sacred spot for such a locally famous artist to be standing where he painted his paintings. Oops, I hit you. Did I knock you off kilter? Maybe a little. <clears throat> so it was a big day for this girl. <laughs> um, so glad my friend is back. Okay. Now, I think what I want to do is sew these rather than glue them. So let's grab Mr. Sewing Machine. Yeah. Have to get it around my... Um, around my tray of stuff. Okay, so I am just going to zigzag up the edges, I think is all I'm going to do. Did a little back stitch there because, you know, that will be a spot of tension. Excuse me while I try and reach around and get my scissors. I'm really liking the brown thread with this paper, too. So that's, that's happy. Okay, let's... Okay. While I have the sewing machine over here, do we want to, let me see what I want to do with the other. Hmm, I suppose we could. No, I think I want to um, just glue that. Sometimes I don't want the sewing taking away from the design of the of the paper. So let's go back to this. Okay, and then template like so. <clears throat> My sleeves keep falling down. That's what I get for wearing a A going out to lunch shirt. I was going to say a fancy shirt, but it's not that fancy. Um, going out to lunch shirt while I'm crafting. <laughs> okay. Yep, I think I want to just give that a little something. There we go. Okay. I'm looking to see, do I want to do any... You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I have... Is that red? That is pink. I thought I had some red stickles, no? Hmm. Oh, I know where I might have some. Hang on. Huh. Okay, I could have swore I had red stickles. I might have to just look for those around my craft room. I don't know where they got to. 
So I think I might just leave this as is. I'm gonna let the Distress ink dry. And, um, but what I'd like to do is use some red stickles. So we'll see if I can find it. Okay, so I'm gonna set this one aside for now. Okay, this one. Let's try some of the frayed burlap from, this is um, from the kit from Mixed Media Minnesota. Hope you all have run over there already and got yours. I don't know. I haven't heard if she's if she's out or anything, but she said she really liked this with this paper. So let's see. Yeah, it is nice. One thing about Distress Ink dries a little faster than the, um, than the oxides. Yeah, that's nice. So we have multiple colors of inks that we're using on the edges of these. We did that. Oh, whoops. Forgot the part that I was going to do before I glued it. <laughs> All right, let's glue that down. So that's just a little pocket on that side. Um, so we will do our punching here. Just kind of trying to give you some ideas for different kinds of pages you can do with the scrapbooking paper. And then I'm gonna do some with just um, coffee dyed or dyed paper too. Okay, so there's that one. I guess we better do a little. Keep with keep with what I'm doing. Somebody asked me, did I tell you this? I can't remember from, at a, on another video, but they asked me about uh, hole reinforcers. Oh gosh. Kind of making a mess, but it's okay. It's um, asked about hole reinforcers, and um, I felt that the blue fern doesn't need it. It's such thick, nice paper. Um, but like, I will put hole reinforcers on the um coffee dyed paper and you know that sort of weight of paper mm, that could lend itself to a big label or something that you know could be written on I don't want to cover up that lace however or even a piece of coffee dyed paper there I think I'm going to round the corners of this, too. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, and then... Hmm... There. 
I was also thinking about the chipboard. These pine cones, maybe. What if we put a pine cone there? Okay, so I want to try something that somebody suggested. Oh, I better put the lid on that or I'm going to be sorry. Already I'm sorry. Um, something that somebody tr said that I might, might like to try and I do want to try it. So let me get, uh, let me get my red. I think we'll do red on the bow and a brown. What color of brown? This is dark brown. This is a lighter brown. Okay. We're going to try this. So what they suggested is that I use a pen to color the color that I want and then put a clear, um, a clear embossing over it. So let's give it a whirl. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So I'm just going to color this. It does really soak in. Makes it much darker than it would normally be. But that's okay. So we went to this super cute place for lunch. It's called um, the Vanilla Bean. And they have yummy food and even yummier <laughs> uh, baked goods. So we each had a, had a sugar cookie. Oh, I love those. Can't eat them very often, but every once in a while it sure hits the spot. Okay. So this, then, got to make sure I'm coloring the right color here. Yeah, this goes here. And then it comes back around here. This ribbon. Okay, so I am going to say that this is the knot of the ribbon. Okay, and then there's a little piece of the ribbon down here. Okay. Okay, and then let's see what this light one does. Ooh. Gosh, it's got like mold or something on it. <laughs> it's rather disgusting, to be honest. Yeah, I was thinking this might be dark enough because it seems like when it goes in the chipboard, it actually does darken. I think that is part of the ribbon right there. Okay. Oh, there's part of the ribbon. This is ribbon. 
right there. Okay. Nope, there's more. <laughs> I keep seeing more. Okay. I get it all? I think so. Okay. Yeah, I'm really curious to see how this comes out with um, then using the clear on it. We'll see. We'll, we'll do that next time because I don't have my embossing stuff out at the moment. Happily, the sides of these chipboard pieces is, are black, so that makes it easier. You don't have to worry about the edges, the sides or the edges. Just what I'm doing here. There's a piece that didn't come out. Oh, there. Okay. Oops. Got a little crazy there. Got I went out of the lines. I will say that if this works, it's going to be great because it really does. Um, I'm just going to see what it really. It's easier than trying to put different colors of embossing pen on it. I'm just kind of going around the edges with this darker brown. Okay. Where'd I color out of the lines right there? Maybe I can just darken that up. Okay. So that's the colors it's going to be. And it's going to sit right here. But it's going to be embossed. So it's going to be, um, you know, shinier. Okay, so we did that. Let's see, I can put these away into my little pen bucket there. Okay, so that one is ready for next step. So let's think about, do we want to put something in that pocket like, would we like to do a journaling card? Let's take a look at the journaling cards. And I didn't even say it this time, I don't think, but this collection is called Yule Tide. It's Blue Fern Studios. All the um, videos in this series will be under Blue Fern Studios playlist. Look at that. That's really pretty. Ooh. I really like that. Let's see. They're all kind of wonderful. Look at her.
the birds, sleds. Wow. So cool. Okay, I think I'm going to settle on this one. And it's got kind of the, the journal cards kind of have an edge around them that you could cut. You know, you could cut around that. But let's see if I just... get this tilted at just the right angle. I do like that. Um, I do. I don't know. I'm thinking about. Oh, I guess this does pretty well. I was thinking about going vintage photo on it, but I think this will be good. Still white showing and it's bugging me. There, that knocks it back. Okay. So we could go that way, but I think I'm going to go this way. Okay, so there is, there is another page, but we know we want to put that on there. So we'll kind of set that aside. Okay. Um, this one. Wow, that is gorgeous. Yeah, it's hard because I don't want to cover any of it up. Now, I mean, all that could be written on. Hmm, well, we're going to punch holes. Then we'll, go, we'll see if we want to do any other decorating on this. Okay. Well, I think red would be pretty around the edge. And this is candied apple. Not doing a super heavy edge, just a bit of a one to kind of frame it. Okay. Ah! I'm scared I got it on my clothes. 
don't think I did though. This shirt was about to become an at-home shirt instead of a going out to lunch shirt. <laughs> I wanted to do was like an envelope flip out. Let me look and see what envelopes do I have that are like I have this one. Ooh, that almost looks like Christmas trees, doesn't it? Kind of like this as a tuck. It's got this... This is the sort of the covering for the um, sticky strip. And then you could could write on this. Tiny bit close, but I think it'll be fine. Okay. I forgot to grab an envelope, but I think it's okay. I found one. I am covering up some prettiness, but man, you can't can't avoid the prettiness on this uh, paper collection. It's all so pretty. So, what if I'm having a thought? What if we put a little lace down this edge right here? Oh, yes, please. So this is Lace 75. It's called the Trim Pack. Okay. Okay, so let's... I think I'm going to use Fabri-Tac just to make sure. I think I'd like a a little down from the edge maybe Oh, yes, I like that. I do, I do, I do. 
Um, now, is there a journal card that I'd like to stick in there? Now, keep in mind, this kit is going to go with all of your Christmas, all your Christmas, a lot of your Christmas papers and whatever. I'm doing it all with this kit because it's a design team project, but like, I mean, look at that in there. How pretty would that be? Yeah. So just keep in mind, there's a lot of, a lot of things you could do here. That's very pretty. I kind of like the black in there. The birdies. I love the birdies. Oh, love that too. Love the birdies more. Okay. And this time I think I'll just use the vintage photo. Like the cards were made for it. Oh, isn't that pretty on the back? Okay. Okay, that's going to go in there. And then I may, I don't know, I may come back and use some other papers. Oh, let me do this too. Okay. I'm going to leave that for journaling space journaling space there needs something um, what if I used yes a big big one of these as a journaling card in there perfect yep Okay, so that one's done. We've got a little time. Ugh, let's see where we're at over here. Okay, this one needs to be, I may go ahead and emboss that. You saw me emboss the, the um, cover. So it's same, same procedure, but I might get that embossed and glued down before the next video, I'm thinking like to do that okay so that one needs a little clip on the okay so we've got a pocket here and we've got this one that flips so we're gonna flip out like this or flip out like this. Now it's not a problem because you can take these out in and out, which is kind of what I like to do, take them in and out. Okay, so you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, that is a lot of the scrapbook paper all together. Well, we're gonna put pages in between is the thing. So, um, I'll show you what I'm thinking of for pages in between. I've got all sorts of all sorts of stuff here. Um, I've got the green and red. I think we should have each one of those, green and red. And they are from Paper Baker Creations. Okay, those. 
Um, I thought about this, the lined paper from Paper Baker Creation. I think one of those would be nice. I thought about one of these, which is from Val's Heartfelt Paper. I know it's flowers, but I think it still, it still could be nice. Those ones are really roses. Okay, I think I want this one. It's on the top. Oh, this is the same. Okay. I wanted that. And I was thinking about maybe this. And then we've got then we've got some other stuff we could work with too. Oh yeah, I was thinking of doing that. I'm gonna do I might we might get that prepared. Okay, and then like I've got this little pockety thing that we could decorate with some of the ephemera or something. So there's that. Um also got this one. Um, and then that's all just paper. I have some braille paper we could use. Okay, but yikes, that's enough for <laughs> the moment. And then I wanted to prepare this too. Okay, 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 okay. So I've got like five pieces here. And two there, so that's seven. And we've got one, two, three, uh, four. So that's 11 pages. I want at least 13, if not more, because I'd, like I'd like to have at least 25 sides. And, but we could have more too. Okay, so now what I was thinking, too, is I have a piece of black paper here, right? Now what I do with those? Here they are. I couldn't find a hexagon punch, but I found a hexagon set, and I was thinking about doing a mosaic with hexagons. You're welcome, Betty. <laughs> and... That, I, that's what I was thinking of doing with that. So, let's cut this paper to the right size. And so we need to go here. And we need to go here. Okay. that and then this could be tags so could this one skinny little tag but a tag okay now I want to punch the holes no I think I'll wait to punch the holes because if the hexagons go over there okay so then my thought is and I Again, I will kind of, oh, sorry, gosh, I don't know what my problem is that I keep hitting you today. Um, I thought I would use, wherever it is, right here, the 8x8 eight eight paper and or scraps. Um... Like this one would be wide enough. 
this is going to be tedious because it's going to be tracing and cutting. So I will do most of it off camera. Oh, I see the inside. That's a thought. These are for quilting, but I can't find a, um, I like this size. This is three fourths of an inch size. And I think it would be maybe easier to just use this or would it be easier to just go, I think it might be. Okay, put those back in. Yeah, found those at Hobby Lobby and thought, okay, well, maybe those would be good. So that's just like white, but the other side, so we're going to have to check the sides. So I'll show you what I'm going to do, but I won't, I won't do them all on camera. <laughs> okay, and then what I'm hoping to do is... Maybe even line them up to where I only have one cut on that bottom edge. See, so cut there. Yeah, that'll, it's going to be a little fussy cutting is what it's going to be. But maybe this weekend I can do that or something. And I'm just going to continue to go up this way. That one I got over a little bit too far. I can't see without putting my head in the camera. Hair's done today, but <laughs> still don't want to put it in the camera. How about you go like this, ding dong? Yep, that works. Yeah, I was thinking about using the 8x8, but better to use scraps where you can. Oh my gosh, you guys, that little house of my friends, Sandra, is renting. It had a little in, in this kind of nook. By the kitchen it had one of those little remember the telephone stands that people had in their house for their telephone and it had like a little slot kind of thing at the bottom of the little desk for a phone book remember those <laughs> it was crazy it was really cool okay so if I were to do this right, this could end up being kind of a, gosh, what would you call it? Um, a border type of thing or something. I'm totally sidetracked, aren't I? But it's, it's just what happened. Let's see, I'm thinking if I can do this. It'd be a lot easier to just cut the one edge, but if I can use this scrap for something else, then it's definitely worth saving it, I think. And then, um, and then I think I'm going to do the same down here. It'll be a little skinnier one. I mean, I'm trying to do this so I can show you guys what I'm thinking, but I'll finish it up off camera. But at least you have an idea. 
see, I just want those like that. So then I'm going to cut this. And see, these, I have them all the way up. So these will be like little page edges or something. Like, like look how cute. So there's that. And then for these, I can just clip along the way. And then, so then we're gonna do the whole paper like that and like, and like that and like that all over the paper. So that was Betty Butler's idea. I'm gonna try and make it happen for you, Betty. Oh, we're almost out of time, but okay. So I'm going to keep that together. Got to emboss the other thing. So I feel like, I feel like we're making progress. Definitely not there, but we're making progress. Okay. Oh, that needs to go with that. Ah, uh, over here. Okay. So I have that to do. I have this guy to emboss so that will be good and that's and that's it let's see so and i'll just so we did that we will finish that off then this one i would have liked that flipping out the other side more but it really isn't a big deal on a three ring thing because it can it can be taken out. And this is not such that I can flip it. So it is what it is. Okay, so and then this pocket. So we can put something big in there. This is just a page page, but it can be written on. This one has this, this, this. Yeah, it's coming along, I think. It's, it's just... It's a lot of work, one of these, that's all. But I hope you're, those of you who are creating along with me are having fun and we will just continue on. We may do, uh, probably do an altered book one um, video before we come back to this, just because I'm trying to flip flop them because there's people um, that are following both. So thanks everybody so much for crafting with me today. Thanks for, um yeah just being here just thanks for being here so we will see you in the next video have a grateful day bye everyone